Today we're going to finish our activity 2.3 playing with lists by completing some housekeeping challenges. You'll find that there are some minor behaviors in the app that still need to be fixed. Because the app is programmed to pick a random item from the word phrase list, the app might repeat a word or phrase that has already been played. If this happens, the players either have to pretend as though they guess correctly and gain a point, or they're going to have to skip to the next word or phrase and lose a point. We're going to need to fix our code so that instead of picking a random item from the list, the program moves through the list in an order, and when it gets to the bottom of the list, it starts back at the beginning. Go ahead and open up your App Inventor Designer window by opening up a new tab or window and going to appinventor.mit.edu. You'll log in using your Google student email address, and then you'll click on Create Apps. Go ahead and click on the project titled Charades. Now to have the program move through the list items in order, the pick next word procedure needs to be changed. You will need to change the set item labels text to select a specific index from that list. You'll also need to add a conditional statement to check the current index of your list. Let's look at modifying our item label text block. We will need to replace the pick a random item list block with a select list item list and index block. For the list, we need to add the get global word phrase list. For the index, we're gonna need to go ahead and add the number one to identify the first item in our list. The next step is to create a new variable. So from the variable drawer, we're gonna to need to drag out an initialize global variable block to your blocks viewer. We will then need to go ahead and change the name of your variable to current index and add the number one to it. For our conditional statement, we're gonna to need to go ahead to our control drawer and add an if else block to your pick next word procedure. For your if then statement, we want the condition to read, if our get global current index is equal to the length of our list, and the list that we are identifying is our global word phrase list, then we're gonna set the global current index to one. What this basically identifies is that if our length of our current index is equal to the number of items that are in our word phrase list, then our list knows that it needs to repeat and go back up to the beginning and start at our current index one. This is what allows the list to go through sequentially and then repeat once it reaches the end. For the last part of our pick next word procedure, we're gonna to need to identify an else statement. Our else statement will be read if our condition is not met. What we'll do is set our global current index to get the global index and add one. This will increment our current index by one. We'll go ahead and set the item labels text to select a list item from our global word phrase list and the index to get our global current index. Let's go ahead and take a look at our MIT App Inventor to see how we can modify this procedure. Once you're in your MIT App Inventor, you're gonna to wanna to head over to your block view. From there, you're gonna to need to go ahead and find that pick next word procedure so that we can modify it. Currently, we have it set up where we're gonna be accessing the word phrase list. And within that list, we're going to be basically randomly selecting one of the items. The big issue is that we can repeat that phrase over and over again. And the players are either going to gain a point or lose a point, depending on what they decide to do as they skip over that. So we're going to have our list be read sequentially. So we're going to start with index one and have it read index two, index three, and so on until it reaches the bottom. Once it reaches the bottom, we'll have it repeat from the beginning. So the first thing we need to do is identify that random item list label. What we're gonna look at doing for this is basically having it read that list and its index. In order to do this, we need to replace this pick random item list with selecting a list item. So we're gonna go into our list drawer and we're gonna look for that select list item. Here you're gonna notice that we have two items that we can identify, which list we're gonna be using, which in this case is still going to be that global word phrase list and the index position in which we wanna start at. In this case, we wanna start at index one. Once you replace that block, go ahead and get rid of that random and drop that select list item list in there. 
The next thing we want to do is create a conditional statement so that when it does get to the bottom of our list, it knows what to do. It should go back and repeat from index one. And if not, it's just going to keep on moving down that list. In order to do that, we need to create a new variable. So we're going to need to initialize a new variable that we're going to call current index. We're going to go ahead and set our current index to one. Now, once you have that new variable, the next thing we need to do is bring in our conditional statement. So we're going to go to that control structure and we're going to bring in an if then else statement. Now, with that condition, we need to have our if statement being read. So for this, we want to look at using an equal block and we're going to drop that into the if condition. What we want to look at is if we're going to go ahead and get our current index. So wherever that current index is, and at this moment, our index would be at one is equal to the length of the list. So however many items you have in that word phrase list, we're going to go ahead and find that length of list. And the list that we're going to be using is that word phrase list. So I'm going to go get and we're going to go ahead and change that to word phrase list. So if the current index is equal to the length of the list, then we're going to go ahead and set that global current index to one. So we're going to go back to our variable and this time we're going to set it. So we're going to go ahead and set that global current index. And again, we're going to go ahead and place that at one. So it's basically happening if our condition is being met here is if the global current index does equal the length of the list. So say we have eight items in that word phrase list, then we're going to set that global current index back to one, which means we should be able to repeat that list. So in order to go sequentially, that's where the else part comes in. So for our else statement, we need to go ahead and find our set global current index. So we'll bring in another set block and we're going to change that to global current index and we're going to go ahead and add that to one. So we're going to grab a math block, find that addition, and we're going to go ahead and get our current index. So whatever it currently is, and we're going to go ahead and add one to it. So in this case, we're going to set the global current index to take whatever it is. So if my global current index is one, we're going to add one plus one and set the index to two. Then we need to go ahead and display whatever would be in index two. So in order to do that, we need to find that item label and we need to change that text. So we're going to take that set item labels text. And from here, we're going to go ahead and select a list item. So back to list and we're going to go ahead and find that select list item. And now the list that we're using is the word phrase list. So we need to get that. And then the index that we're using is going to be our current index. Now you've created a sequential order where we can go through that list. Obviously, the more things you add to that word phrase list, the longer that index is going to be and the better chance you're going to have of not repeating things throughout the course of the game. Now that we've created that pick next word procedure and finalized it, let's go ahead and take a look at two additional issues that we have within our app. Let's take a quick look at how we can modify the remaining components in our charades game app. The first thing we need to look at is the word phrase button click. When the word phrase button is clicked, we need to make sure that our time gets reset back to 30 seconds. So we're going to need to go ahead and add that reset timer procedure to this event handler. As for the skip button, when the skip button is clicked, we want it to advance to a new word. So we're going to bring in that new procedure that we created, the pick next word procedure, and add that to the event handler. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this in our MIT App Inventor, and then we're gonna go ahead and test our app. Once you're back in your MIT App Inventor, you're gonna to wanna to identify the word phrase button click event handler, as well as the skip button click event handler. Now again, for that word phrase we want to have occur here is when we click on that word phrase button, we're gonna go ahead and pick a new word, but we're also gonna go ahead and reset that timer back to 30 seconds. So in order to do this, all we need to do is to go to our procedures and grab that call reset timer. As for the skip button, 
Whenever we click on that skip button, we do want to decrement the score, but we also need to go ahead and pick a new word. So we'll go back to our procedures and call that pick next word procedure. Now that we have that taken care of, it's time to go ahead and test our app to make sure it is working correctly. Once you're in your MIT app companion or tablet, it's time to go ahead and test a few of the procedures that we've modified. The first is gonna be the click here for word or phrase. Previously, we had our list being selected through a random item. We went ahead and modified that so we can sequentially go through that list once we click on that. So here you can see that if we click on that word or phrase, we have building a sandcastle, then we have driving a car, opening a gift, shoveling snow, swimming, tying a shoe, walking a dog, and then back to the top of our list, which was brushing our teeth. So as we went through that list, we did not repeat any of those words or phrases because of the way that we've modified our indexes to be selected. The next thing we took a look at was that skip to next word. So whenever we skip to that next word now, you're gonna see that we're gonna go ahead and decrement our score as well as advance to a new word or phrase in our list. So again, you can see our score has gone to negative two and we have a new word or phrase. We click it again, same thing. The last thing we went was that word phrase button. Not only do we change the way that our list was being selected, but we added that reset timer. So here you can see that if we start the time counting down, when we click on that word phrase list, we're gonna get a new word or phrase, but we're also gonna go ahead and get that timer to go back to 30 seconds. The player would then click on the start timer before acting out. Now that you've completed your charades game app, it's time to move on to the next activity.